There's gonna be caribou chili tonight, boys. A cluck cluck, yeah. A cluck cluck, yeah. Ooh, caribou. Hello humans and hey. welcome to bonus audio phase. We're back at it again. We do, we're doing a lot of these bonuses this year. I wonder why. Bonus, it's, bonus, it's bonus, bonus, bonus. Yes. Um, no, we're doing a lot of bonuses this year because we just happen to be blessed with a lot of really good music coming out this year. Um, and you know, we had Tame Impala. Um, mm -hmm. where we experienced that. But le next on the docket, we have Caribou. Um, mm -hmm. Caribou is going to be a very interesting sort of thing to unpack, an artist to unpack. Caribou's um, newest album, Suddenly, is coming out at time of recording um, a couple days from now, about a week from now, and we'll be talking about that on Audio Face episode 132. Yes. Um, however, we do these introspective, retrospective sort of episodes because, where we look yeah. back at the artists as they are, so you can get caught up to speed, if you will, um, in a way that's faster than listening to the entire discography like we did. So, um, Dan Snaith. Um, a fellow Dan from the internet, um, he was born in 1978. He's a Canadian composer, musician, and recording artist who um, we all know as Caribou, but that's not the full story. Um, Caribou started originally, or like, what, Caribou as we know it now, started as a, a moniker called Manitoba, um, named after the Canadian province area type thing. Mm -hmm. And there were um, two albums that released under Manitoba, it was Start Breaking My Heart and Up in Flames. Eventually, um, it, it, it's a theme with these episodes, it's all good bands do. They have their first name and then they change it. Um, it's, I mean, the difference between Manitoba and Caribou at this point is just like creating a bunch of sounds to make sure that people can identify your sound with like yeah, your yeah. other sounds is in a very like fundamental linguistics kind of way of looking at it. But um, it, it's helpful to look at the different sort of eras of caribou. Mm -hmm. And I like to break it down as like Manitoba era, caribou in the aughts, so like in the 2000s, yeah. and then caribou in the 10s. Mm -hmm. But then there's Daphne. There's Daphne, which <laughs> is a whole Daphne. little thing. Yes. Um, but like, I, I don't want to confuse people who are like watching or like listening to this too quickly. Let's start kind of with the beginning chronologically. So Dan Snaith, this is at the time when, and a little bit into him, yeah, um, born in 1978, started under Manitoba. But he was being threatened with a lawsuit of um, former Dictators punk rock band member Richard, quote, Handsome Dick Manitoba. Mm -hmm. um, after that, Nath changed his stage most, name to Caribou. It's the most Canadian thing, by the way. Yeah. Like, I don't get how you coin Manitoba. It's like, yeah. I've named myself so, Arkansas. Yeah. And if you, use your, if you use the name Arkansas in any kind of music, I will sue. Yeah, exactly. Because Manitoba is... Yeah, it's just, that's funny. yeah. So it's the province. Um, yeah, exactly. I believe. <laughs> our, yes, like, no, it is a province. Yeah, our um Canada. Because yeah. that's where it's uh, uh Winnipeg is the capital of Manitoba. Yes. Um. So yeah, when playing gigs, Snaith usually performs with a live band, and he plays percussion. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's got like a bubble of bandmates coming coming together, but kind of like with Tame and Paula, it's one person kind of bring yes, it all together in the studio, exactly. and then it comes to life on stage. So let's get into um. Start Breaking My Heart, which was... I, I went back to listen to this because my entrance in the Caribou was a lot later. But, um... Oh, the Manitoba... I haven't listened to any of the Manitoba days. So... Yeah, Start Breaking My Heart is a very, um, kind of interesting. I'll say that... I'm sorry to introduce so many terms, but there's a term that's related to Caribou's music a lot called IDM. It's called Intelligent, Intelligent Dance, Dance music. music. And I'm going to asterisk this for a moment because I really hate the term, but, um... Caribou's earlier music, um, like his first album came out March 6, 2001, 20 songs long, an hour and 43 minutes. Um, oh, wow. And it was very much like an electronic album of that time in the aughts. It, like, it's progressive house in a way, so it starts, it has its build-ups, it's mm -hmm. build-up to very gradual, it has a, like a crescendo, big, loud point near the middle, near end of the song, and then it kind of slowly comes down. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really interesting album. I liked Mammals vs. Reptiles, which was the first one kind of going into it. It gives you a good idea of kind of um, Manitoba or Caribou at this time. Mm -hmm. The intelligent dance music moniker is kind of this... I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a category that people who have been oh, it's, ascribed uh, IDM yeah. also hate it. 
But what were you going to say? Oh, no, it's such a small niche category, too. Yeah. Not many people talk about IDM. And it's trying to describe, what it's ultimately trying to describe is electronic music that is experimental in a way that it um, messes with time signatures and structures. The, the same stuff we kind of get all the yeah. hypey, well, we, we take all the bullshit out of it when we say, just do something different. That's kind of what well, we're But it's usually, for, but... a lot of it has to do with modular synthesis, if you know, if you guys are... Uh, electronic music heads know what a modular synthesis, modular synthesis. is. Synthesis. Yeah. Modular synthesis. Yeah, well, modular synthesis is literally a giant box of wires that you control everything through. It's very complicated to use. Uh, Johnny Gooney uses a lot with Radiohead, and uh, that's how, like, the earliest... It makes sense he did a lot of it in Manitoba, because that's the earliest uh, electronic music is usually... Or, like, dance stuff is usually through a modular synthesis. Yeah. Um, because it's it's very versatile, but it's of such niche things. Also, it's expensive as fuck. It's yeah. like fifteen grand for a, a, a complete modular synthesizer, and uh, yeah, yeah, and it's that's expensive. It shows great mastery to use. We should also mention maybe at this point that Dan Snaith has a doctorate in mathematics mm -hmm. from the Imperial College London. Um, <laughs> so like he's a smart dude. But yes. like the reason I hate IDM is because it's like you you are doing very intelligent things. I think it's worth calling out, but. I think anything that gets called like smart or like labeled smart mm -hmm. eventually becomes taken over by pompous people who are like, yeah. this is our yeah, music yeah. that you should like. You should not like this other music, which arguably you could criticize us for doing, but like we're transparent in what we're talking about. And our message from the start has been about bringing the complexity of music to the masses and showing that it's not that complex. It's actually fairly simple um, if you learn it and it's very fun if you learn it. Um, but that's a lot of start breaking my heart. It goes from Caribou's career trajectory his songs get a little bit less of the kind of genre where you would like sit back and bop in your room to listen mm -hmm. to them while you're like studying or something to things that you would actually like get out and socialize and dance to which i think is the overall kind of trajectory of him um next in the manitoba era and kind of the last in the manitoba era we have the album up in flames um which truthfully doesn't like um differ too greatly from the previous album it's similarly long, or definitely a little bit shorter, but um, there are songs in this where I think you can see little bits of where Caribou is going. Like the song Jack Nutted is a little, Jack Nuggeted mm -hmm. is really random. There's a lot of stuff happening in it, but it, it's the chaotic entropy that somehow works with Caribou that you can see on display even as early as 2003 with that um, song. So it's good to like, see that and get that kind of context and experience um in that early time yeah because i started listening to him um his first thought well first album as caribou is the milk the milk of human kindness right which i listened to a little bit here and there still um because there's a couple tracks i genuinely like on that album too um if we get into his more i wouldn't say up-to-date discography but more yeah. of what people know for sure we're now in caribou in the aughts now yeah caribou in the aughts um because there's a couple of tracks, I really like Pelicaneros and Bees on those two. Because I mean, those are like, yeah. Bees. But the thing with this album, because it's, it's not super electronic for um, The Milk of Human Kindness, from what I remember. It's more of like, like just jamming, ba like jamming-ish bands, but like with slight vocals over it. But like, it's very stripped back, but then you have some electronic in it as well. But it's a whole different thing compared to... Like, there's more known albums that Swim and um, Our Love, for sure. Yeah. Electronic is more of, like, a supplement. Um, for this being, like... For, a, for the milk of human diamonds, yeah. for sure, yeah. Because this album came out in 2005. I remember, because it, it was a lot of that just... Um, kind of, like, jamming out where you're just um, improvising a lot of the stuff with it. Yeah. Which I like. I've always liked uh, music. That's how I got into Caribou, was... Stuff through that. And the stuff he did with Jesse Lanza as well, but we'll get to that later. What a time to do it as well, because like 2005 is the peak of this exact kind of sound mm -hmm. um, that songs like Bees have, where it's very um, alternative rock. And yeah, like you said, you're mm -hmm. just jamming. You're just like, mm -hmm. the song still keeps going. You're adding new elements to it, making it more and more complex, but it's like, it, it's fun, especially live, but um, fun to listen to. <coughs> um, what about Andorra, the one that came after that? It's um a, a little bit different than that it's more uh more pieces into it. it i wouldn't say it's more upbeat but it's definitely more experimental for sure you have like because i know melody day i remember uh hearing that and it's just a lot of different sounds there's a lot of aspects to it um but that's that kind of style of that album where it's 
really experimental and then he starts diving more into electronics within caribou you have like some synthesizers and stuff in there with a lot of a lot of keyboard synthesizers are in it um i still uh, obviously i like it um uh, the main thing with this is it's shorter than um like some the album is pretty short it's just yeah. nine songs but some of the tracks about are long minutes. yeah exactly they're average about four minutes long but there's a lot of pieces to the tracks because then they'll like they'll stop and then they'll keep going or they'll have these deep things where there's so many sounds there's a lot of the percussions are very heavy in uh in andorra where um again the vocals are like that and we see here in house music where it's just like kind of back and forth but it's nothing like really special it's more used as an instrument itself um but that's when he starts to ex you can really start to see experimentation before then you go into my personal favorite yeah um when we get to Sorry, but in Andorra, the song She's the One, I think, matches this one? precipice between mm -hmm. um, Caribou of the Aughts and Manitoba mm -hmm. to Caribou of the Aughts. Uh, you know what it reminds You know what? It's a good comparison of Andorra is a Beach House. It's a lot like um, Seven mm -hmm. from Beach House. I would say even older Beach House than that. I think Seven is not uh, the right Well, sound, there's a couple, because it's like the first opening parts of Seven with Beach House. There's a couple tracks that are like that. Fair. But then, um, now it's pronounced vocals, but kind of that stuff where it's sound the entire time. It's that indiness. Beach House doesn't use nearly as much electronics as Caribou, but still, that's kind of that style of it. Because then I remember once he, uh, after Andorra, when he went to swim, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. It's, and that's when I really, like, got into it. I, I get what you're saying with Beach House um, being the kind of thing where, especially Seven, it's... We were talking earlier about how electronics and synthesizers are an element of the song as opposed to being the full thing. In Beach House, the synthesizers kind of took over to being very close to front and center, but like a sharing the stage with all the traditional rock and indie mm. elements. And that's what kind of made it really cool. Um, and there are bits of that in She's the One. But before we get to Caribou in the Tens, which I know we have a lot of thoughts about, I think now is the great time to take that kind of side view into Daphne. Yeah, which is his little side project yeah. that he does. Um, it's not it's not super well known compared to his other work for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, and I even found some stuff that I hadn't known I about in anymore. searching for this episode. Um, but Daphne is an alter ego yes. of Dan Snaith, um, as many artists do. Um, they create these alter egos so that they can have the ability to experiment and try different sounds or modifications on their general core sound while having that freedom mm. to not be tied mm -hmm. so closely to your previous work. Because I remember a lot of the Daphne I've listened to is more like funk beats, like jazz groove beats. Way more dancey. And it's, it's yeah, it's not super experimental compared to Caribou, but it's like, it's fun. It's just a, definitely a different pivot. Because I remember when I found out about Daphne, I think about with... Um, Shout out to We Made a Podcast, Bam. I remember Bam talking to me about it because he listens to Caribou Heavy. Yeah. And he told me about Daphne maybe in 2014 or something like that. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize he had another act or whatever. And I go, this is different. This is kind of cool. Um, yeah. Um, and it's good because... So I remember the song Face to Face goes hard. I if, like that. Which yeah, is the just song like Face this, to Face. The, the, uh, the bass line is just like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's the one, one, of, one of the house mixes I have. I put it in there. It's um, kind of a fun little thing. And there is... So... A lot of artists do this, where they'll release music under different monikers or different projects, hopefully to have the um, ability to experiment and try different things and try mm -hmm. different sounds that are far different than what people know them to, without the added the pressure, yeah, added pressure and complication stuff. of music yeah. reviewers like us going, "Oh, well, it doesn't sound like the past album," because mm -hmm. you want artists to have the freedom with that, and sometimes creating a new moniker can do that as well. Um, on, like, again, to toot our own horn, we do better than I think a lot of other music reviewers do and allowing artists that creative freedom and mm -hmm. giving them the benefit of the doubt, even when it doesn't quite land. But yeah. Daphne is just, like, very much... You should listen day, to it's it. Not, it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's different because like, I remember his... his uh, Daphne's Ace album was a couple years ago, right? It's pretty recent. I think 2016, 2017 an or EP, so. An EP came out and from Daphne in 2019, so this is still very active in the summer. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, and there was a song on it, Romeo, that's just like, similar to Face to Face. It's so like, not random, but just like such a bump and such a it's bang. It's fun, You yeah. can tell how, I, I can't even tell that much it has caribou DNA in it, but it's like, that mind is capable of quite oh, a lot. He does a lot. Uh, yes. But then we go into... Caribou in the Tens. Tens, which is where most people know it from and how... I really got into him in 2010 with Swim. Holy fuck, I love this album so much. 
I remember because um, on MBE they played Odyssey, which is the opening uh, track or Odyssey, whatever. Odessa? Yeah, I can't fucking speak words. And that track was amazing. I go, okay, I got to get Swim. I remember I bought Swim on a um, on iTunes back in the day before they deleted all my shit. Thank you, Apple. <laughs> um, and then there's a track called uh, La Bella at the end, uh, um, track eight, where it's just this straight up 90s little house beat thing and i loved it so much i've listened to that track on repeat all the time i'm listening to right now because i'm like i need this in my <laughs> life that album really made me fall in love with caribou of, okay this guy's ridiculously good it was such a pivot from andorra where it's almost all electronic but it's super experimental it's very unique it's different and yeah uh you have Found out, Bulls, Leaf House, Leaf House is really good, La Bella, uh, Odessa, all of those tracks, they're just very unique in its own special way. So I was trying to, I wanted that album on the 50 to 10s, but we couldn't. We, we had a very strong we, argument uh, about having which, either Swim or, or Caribou's next album, Our Love, on 50 to the 10s, and it was, it was a close one. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's Swim is a very good album, and I like it very much, which sounds like a hostage situation kind of deal, but no. Um, Songs like Bowls and Leaf House, but you, you kind of name the ones I really love. Those, yeah, it's it, like it's really so good. It Caribou started doing this thing with Swim that is very much accentuated on Our Love, where like you only need two seconds of the song and you're in yeah. the whole yeah. thing. Um, it's just such an enticing beat. It's like, I mean, fuck. Let me just get to the next album because I think I'll be able to talk about it more in depth here. But um, Our Love. Um, the Caribou album that's most recent coming to this, at least under the Caribou moniker project kind of thing, um, <clears throat> was phenomenal, was a massive piece. It was on our 50 of the 10s list mm. somewhere. You should go back and listen to Audio Face episode 125 God, to Silver figure out about good that. Song. But Jesus like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> basically, the way I, the way we, I really if we like that track. the way we finished the argument over our love versus swim was I played Silver and just five seconds through I'm the like, show, I'm I was like, I'm okay, like, the song, I, that song, it was because it, it was an interesting time in my life when that song came out, and it was just it spoke volumes to me. I think is why the rest of the album I I love out love for sure. I really like um, all I ever need, second like chance, Can't Beautiful without shoes. Yeah. But then silver is just this beautiful thing of just the synthesizers in the in the back with the percussions and his vocals. They're just really high pitched and airy, and it's beautiful. You have this little voice that is. Uh, really manipulate in the background you did it the entire time too and just like you can float and relax it feels like your ears are being hugged like a yeah. really nice warm hug honestly. because yeah i've listened to this song just a ridiculous amount of time obscenely yes uh, but this album is fantastic our love is amazing yeah um all of his singles he's pushed pushed out now too wait, wait re i do want to also oh, wait, wait. shout out um all i ever need which is the song right before oh, that yeah, like, right after something um, all i ever need is really good too. Th there's a lot especially in this album where um some of caribou's like other projects like our love is the closest thing to like a dancey sort of thing almost mixing with daphne kind of stuff mm -hmm. that caribou had released to that point and it was really good like the, the change between earlier like aughts caribou and here is that this is caribou who is a lot more tighter at producing mm -hmm. a lot more um short and sweet so like the songs mm -hmm. that hit really hit well, and just like it's, it's a little more upbeat i've noticed was before mm -hmm. it would be like Oh, it's intellectual because you listen to it silently in a room mm -hmm. while reading literature or mathematics or whatever. Now it's just like a... Well, because it, it, you, it's, it's, you it's have better tracks that are straight techno. Because like Julia Brightly, I know that track is straight up techno. It's yeah. like a certain little two minute thing of just like, on any drugs. Old school techno. Yeah, like, you just want to start running when you listen to that song. Yeah, yeah there's, there's lots of things. He's so experimental and this is definitely one of my favorite artists of... Yeah, our love Before quite did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's really talented. A lot of people we, sleep what on single him. But... Did we, what's the single did we talk about? Like, let me see. So, I don't 100% remember which was one, but I think, it, I think was, it was Home. It was either Home or You and I, or we may have done both. It was Home. I'm pretty sure it was Home. Yeah. Because um, Home, I remember, it brought back a lot of the old caribou within the new caribou. Because you had kind of that... Um, the like sound of caribou. Andorra, yeah, of, of Andorra mixed with our love because you had way more um, actual instrumentation, a lot of electronics in it, and way more lyrics, especially yes. with especially with home. The other uh, singles are a little different, but then I'll wait until the rest of the album is out, and then we'll talk about that because I mean, audio face rule. So my hot take 
maybe I'll like elaborate or maybe I'll just tease mm -hmm. is that um, Never uh, Come Back, the new. So good. Ne Christ. Yeah, it's very good songs, but it's sounding a little bit like Tori Moi. It's sounding very yeah, Vista Wavy. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a bad thing, it's just an observation. Like, yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. It's like a much more fast Cause, paced Because you, you and I also get that vibe too, but it's. It's way more put together than that. So, but anyways, um, yeah, we were very looking forward to it. Go listen to all the stuff that we talked about because he's done so many different things. He's done stuff with another Canadian artist uh, named Jesse Lanza, and she's done. She's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. He's just collaborated a lot with just different artists, different people. His all his different acts himself. Yeah. There's a lot of music to listen to. So yeah. if you haven't. And listen to his stuff please do yourself a favor and go down a rabbit hole of a musician so yeah there is um like you know like not to say anything about tame impala but like tame impala's discography was pretty straightforward and simple there is a there are rabbit holes there are separate rabbit holes you can fall down just by listening to this one person's music and oh caribou there's so much yeah you, you can't say that um enough by just doing like one episode like mm -hmm. this um you really just have to sort of experience it but um we hope you do experience it, and we hope you experience it with us, especially as we review suddenly the um, Tam and Paul album that is coming out um, mm -hmm. in the next couple days. Yes. Um, or maybe you're listening to this in the past or like in a distant future, and episode 132 is just like one above this. So yeah. go ahead and listen so to that. Um, this has been Audio Face. We do love doing these um, retrospective yes. episodes for you. We think they're really helpful and useful if you're just trying to get into an artist. And um, let us know you like these by reaching out to us on social media at Audio Face Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Um, share the podcast. Give it a five-star rating, especially if you listen on Apple Podcasts because apparently that's the only place that matters. Mm -hmm. um, Dan can... Dan, who is my name, can be found on <laughs> Dan, which is my name, can be found on Instagram at Dan from the Internet and on Twitter at Dan from the Web. Sean is his name. He can be found at SW Suarez on both. Whole show can be found yes. whenever you get podcasts or at youtube.audiofaith.show. Yes. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. No, and it's all Hugh Neutron. Like they secretly made him like an un un oh, yeah. uncomfortably awkward, like racist, secretly racist character. Oh, you know he he know he's off day heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know he's hella off day. <laughs> Hugh Neutron is authoritarian concern. Like on the spectrum. Oh, on the spectrum. He's a, he's, he just by the, he's just he's by the Crusader helmet. He's by the Crusader and the SS helmet. <laughs>